Welcome to Watch Symposium, I'm Austin. All right, Rolex Talking Points, part three. This is the crystal and the case back, page eight and nine. Now, if you wanna see these um, pages for yourself and you can see the whole Talking Points book, check out the link in the description. You can see the color photos. I definitely recommend you check them out. Um, now, this heading, the crystal and the case back, and you can see right here the, the picture, this is a, oyster case back and right here is a Submariner date crystal and here a cut of a sea dweller 4000 crystal which apparently is three millimeters thick all right the crystal or watch glass is either made of a scratch resistant synthetic sapphire or a virtually unbreakable plastic material all right so at the time of, of this um, book, which I think it comes from 1985, so wow, over 30 years old, they must have been still making uh, the plastic crystals, which, you know, we often refer to as acrylic crystal. Both fit the case with precision. Then the bezel is added primar primarily for decorative purposes. Finally, the back is screwed into the case and a combination of extremely accurate threading and a special joint ensures a perfect waterproof seal for all oyster models. All right, and then under the, the Submariner date crystal, the, um, the caption reads, the Submariner date and the Sea Dweller 4000 models are all equipped with an extremely tough sapphire crystal. So my guess is that something like a Datejust might have still had the plastic crystal. Something like a 1601 Datejust, which you know you can find those on Rakuten for pretty, um, pretty good prices. You know about uh, two thousand five hundred dollars, uh, around you know less than three thousand would have uh, the virtually unbreakable plastic material, that uh, acrylic crystal. Now it says here the scratch resistant synthetic sapphire. Now, I've never really thought much about a sapphire crystal, but and I think if you had asked me, I, I don't think they, I, you know, I wouldn't have told you that they mined them. Um, but it's interesting to read that they are synthetic. So they are, they are, um, man-made and you know it's just not something i've ever really thought about but it's interesting to see that now on the next page or on the next side of this page the question for divers only and then you've got a it's like a person diving now i, I thought this was particularly interesting when i read it the first time let me let me read it to you guys though the oyster principle has allowed Rolex to perfect watches specially adapted to the needs of the professional or amateur diver. They are ideal for people in many other walks of life. For a waterproof watch does more than keep out water. It keeps out dust, sand, perspiration, and as a general rule, protects the movement from anything that could impede its working. The Oyster was barely a year old when Hans Wilsdorf, Rolex founder, asked a young London typist, Mercedes Gleitz, to wear it during a cross-channel swim in 1927. The oyster, the oyster behaved perfectly. It proved itself to be totally waterproof, a fact that has been constantly confirmed over half a century under all conditions. Now, this is particularly interesting because, you know, when we, when we think about a diving watch, or a watch that can handle, you know, deep water. Well, that's just what we think about water. And it's interesting to hear Rolex say that it just isn't water, but dust, sand, perspiration, and as a general rule, protects the movement. So it's interesting to hear them acknowledge that they have really not just divers in mind, but people from, as they put it, all walks of life. and you know, that it's just not salt water they have in mind, but, you know, your own sweat and, you know, everyday house dust. Um, again, it would it would make for a good talking point if you're trying to, say, sell a, a diver to a person that 
said, well, I don't know if I need this. I'm not a diver. You know, you would, you could say, well, you know, that's, uh, you know, it's not just diving that makes this watch great, but the fact that it can, well, you know, protect itself from just, you know, the uh, daily, daily uh, contaminants and things that would would uh, damage the movement and you could bring up dust and sand and per perspiration and whatnot. So it's interesting to hear them uh, kind of say for divers only. I, I, and essentially Rolex is giving just the average person the thumbs up to wear it and I like that. Anyway, take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.